Here is today's tea tasting from my uh, New York Tea Society Tea Club. If you want to join them, you just go to their website. You can find it to uh, pay for it and uh, get information on it. This is Mi Zhang or Mi Zhang. I think it's Mi Zhang probably. I haven't had the uh, tasting group to tell me what it tastes like yet. It's a Taiwanese oolong. So during the month of June, we're doing all Taiwanese oolongs. And here is what it looks like. We've done our dry smelling. And so I haven't actually brewed any. It gives you enough for two brews, but then he's always generous. You really should weigh. <laughs> Isn't it a beautiful tea? I mean, this looks like it's gonna make a great tea. Let's see if I can pick up pieces of it, kind of to see what we got going on. Okay, so I pulled some out and put some on my table, just some random ones. You can see they're fairly consistent in size. You look at that one and you see it is, it looks like a bud in one leaf. That's my guess on that one because it has uh, two, it has an initial one coming out the end and then another one coming out the side. That's just one big long needle-like rolled leaf. <laughs> that one's funny shaped. Ooh, look at that rich, deep, gorgeous color. I love it. I think I'm going to really like this tea based on the aroma. As long as it's not too astringent. Gorgeous tea. So sometimes like what I like to do is get the actual food I think I'm smelling. And here's a big clue for this one. So we are actually smelling this, not tasting it, because the smell is enough. And uh, there's something else in there. So here's your other clue about what this tea tastes like. I went and got a peach out, and I'm actually trying to get the pit separated from uh, the rest of the peach and oh, I just had, you'll see when I get to my tasting notes, an aha moment when I tasted the peach. But I'm trying to, hubby does not like fruit, so I'm just having him to smell it uh, and compare it to what he's uh, drinking. And he's getting some aha moments too. But I think there's a difference between the pit of the peach and the meaty flesh of the peach. But this one happens to be very tart and not uh, so sweet. Good Lord, what have you done to the thing? Looks like it's been violated. <laughs> Did you give it anesthesia before you operated? <laughs> um. I had so much trouble getting the pit out, but I wanted to separate it. I bought this beautiful peach to make peach tea with peach infused tea to, to put in a like a cold brew. <laughs> And here I am using it for my tasting. <laughs> but I got the pit out with the spoon. <laughs> and it left a big gaping hole. And then I had to eat the stuff off of the pit. So it was a good experience to eat the fruit directly around the pit. Because it does taste different than the nice outside of it. So here's the strange thing about this tea, and you'll see if you listen through my tasting notes. The peach pit I got during the tasting phase, and the meat, the, the tartness of this particular peach, I got during the finish. But then while I was videoing and we were chatting, I inadvertently steeped some tea too long, and then the whole thing changed to more of the peach pit taste um, in the taste and the finish. Isn't that interesting? With a, just a tad of honey flavor. 
Okay, so wow. So we got the phrase from like the Las Vegas crime syndicate. <laughs> Fabulous. If you want to know what we're talking about, you need to watch to the end of the video. <laughs> there you go, Pete. Okay, we kind of decided that this tea is the same color as the honey. So I had this great idea. I'm dropping honey on my peach to see what if it, if it tastes a lot like this tea. I'm silly. Well, that was an interesting experience. I thought that the peach would become sweeter from the honey and be too sweet, but it was actually the other way around. The tartness of the peach took away the sweetness of the honey. You really have to try this yourself. Here are my tasting notes for this Mijang Oolong. Um, it's with the tea club that I'm in. If you go to the New York Tea Society Tea Club website, you'll find information and how you can pay for it and join. Um, very reasonably priced for the high quality tea. Uh, this was tasted on June 13th. It's an oolong um, in the from the Pingling district of Taiwan. That's the origin. Uh, the Pingling is part of the water district of the great, greater Taipei area. So you see it over here in the little red border outline where Pingling is, but this says new uh, Taipei City and it's at the top of Taiwan. This is one of the bug bitten teas and um, it's bug bitten before harvest. Um, and I've had some other, uh, one other bug bitten tea and it was the uh, Bai Hao or Dong Feng Mei Ren. And again, I remind you every time I do not say these correctly, I am a learner who's passing on things that I learn, but it's also known as Oriental Beauty. Um, so I, I've had this once before and, um, I've copied this, so you can go watch that video. I think I put it in there about bug biting. Um, the Mi Zhang, this is from Red Blossom Tea's website, um, is also honey fragrance. Uh, and it's created when the tea maker allows various insects, most notably this Jacobasica or Masana, also known as the tea jazid or a small green leaf hopper, which are much easier to say. So these uh, tea jazids uh, are allowed to attack the tea plant prior to harvest. And when bitten by these insects, the tea plants release specific terpenes, some sort of compound. If you like science stuff, you can go learn about all of this stuff. So this uh, compound repels the bugs, uh, but to the human palate, it surprisingly tastes like honey. And when crafted into tea, the leaves retain the honey fragrance, making for a smooth, aromatic, and naturally sweet infusion. So from the tea chat, this is what I learned. So uh, Dong, this name, Dong Fan Mi Ren, with Oriental Beauty, which is the same as what I have up here, only they've put the words together, is one type of bug bitten tea. This Mi Zhang honey aroma is another. And there's a third one, whatever, however you pronounce this, Gi Fei, known as Royal Concubine. Now I'm gonna have to get that one and try it because I've actually really liked the, the number one and the number three, but I've never had the number two. It seems really strange to have your tea bitten by bugs. Uh, bugs feel like they're so unclean, but hey, you know, you just get over it and realize it's a really good tea. So here's the uh, color on the color spectrum, uh, brown, and you see the photo even reflects it.
And it's the same color as our honey. So you saw that in the video, it tastes just like honey and it looks like honey. So that was a fun discovery that we made. The uh, fruit is the category for the aroma flavor. Um, and I picked out the fruit category right away. And then it didn't take me long to realize it was honey. So I love when I can identify it right away. Sometimes I sit and have to think for a very long time before I decide what it smells like. Um, and then we got out our honey and compared the smell and the honey is sweet smelling, but the leaves are the same smell with, but no sweetness. So if you can imagine that or just get this tea and try it. Um, in, in the wet leaves, although um, I got it in the dry, I got it more in the wet was peach pit. Now, not like the meat, not like the meaty part of the peach, but the smell of the pit, which is a deeper peach flavor. So I've had this before, and actually I had it in the Oriental Beauty. So I actually had a peach because I was going to infuse it with a cold brew tea. So um, I took it and I played with it and I got the pit out and we smelt the pit and we smelt, I had to eat around the rest of the pit, <laughs> but we, smelled the pit and the peach over and over and over and it was actually quite a fun quality time <laughs> comparing what we were smelling to what we were smelling uh, in the peach to what we were smelling in the tea. Body uh, we put as medium. Uh, astringency was bright light. Uh, I inadvertently steeped it too long which is often a good taste for me to know if I really like a tea or not, because I call it forgiving or unforgiving. And this tea is kind of in the middle. It did change when it was over steeped, but it was not horrible. So um, I personally don't like unforgiving tea. That's unforgiving of my errors when I inadvertently steep them too long and uh, then they turn bitter. But this one is in the middle. It wasn't too bad when I oversteeped it. But I do like the bright light category. That's one of my favorite. Um, taste. It's like unsweetened honey. So it tasted like it smelled, which is cool. Um, during the taste on the tongue, I get the peach pit. But during the finish, I get the tart meat of the peach, which was something that was affirmed after I ate the meat on the peach. I went, oh, aha, that is what I just tasted on the tea. It was like, it's so cool when you get those aha moments. Because <laughs> I had gotten a tartness in the finish, and then I tasted the peach, and then there it was. I realized that there is a big difference between the peach pit and the meat of the peach. And the meat was tart, and the pit is not. Um, and then it was really odd because when I oversteeped it, the finish changed to the deep peach pit. So it, the finish did change. And we're talking about finish in the taste category. Uh, so let's go on down to the finish. Um, see, my notes get scattered everywhere because I just type them when I think them. So um, I rarely type them later. I usually type them while I'm thinking. I'm first thinking. I'm first impressions. So uh, lingering and aromatic. The finish is tart was exclamation point. It was quite strange. I Whenever the tea comes out tart, I've had a couple now do that. It, it's just strange. <laughs> tea should not be tart. Um, and then here it is where it said I got out the peach and strangely enough, it was tart. Uh, it's not a juicy and sweet one. My peach wasn't. It was exactly the same taste as this finish. So I could have inadvertently got a really good juicy, pe you know, sweet peach. But I happened to get one and buy one that was exactly like this tea. Because I do think the taste of uh, peaches, you know, are different based on how um, ripe they get. So rating, um, I love this tea. I uh, gave, it, gave it five hearts. And I said out loud to my husband, winner, winner, chicken dinner. And, and he replied, winner, winner, tea time dinner. 
<laughs> so that's what we decided. And then we were sitting here having our quality time conversations. And I said, okay, so where does that phrase we just modified come from? Where does winner, winner, chicken dinner come from? So, of course, I had to uh, look it up. And the phrase was used to convey a positive income. That's the basic uh, definition. So that does apply. Uh, but then I went on to more. It said, winner, winner, chicken dinner is a phrase exclaimed to celebrate a victory, especially in gambling. Well, that's interesting because the most popular origin of the story of the term is that the chicken dinner at the Las Vegas casino used to cost two dollars the same amount as a standard bet so if you want to bet you want a chicken dinner that makes total sense <laughs> has nothing to do with tea but it was a great conversation <laughs> however this David Guzman author of a book has said the term comes from back alley gamblers during the Great Depression in the 30s. These desperate gamblers would bet whatever they had in hopes of winning a chicken dinner. So who knows where this phrase comes from, but everybody says it. Um, it could come from betting on chicken or rooster fights. At the end, the one that was, this is, I remember this now. At the end, the one who stands alive is the winner. <laughs> Isn't that true? The one who stands alive is the winner of the bet, and the one who lays dead is the winner of the chicken dinner. <laughs> so it's a win-win. Win, winner, winner, chicken dinner. It's a win-win situation. Okay, the things that come out of tea chats. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this, and if you've had this tea, uh, let me know. Let me know your thoughts about it.